fate and destiny are really terrifying. When you sit down and actually think about it, the thought that you are destined to do this one thing or you were created with the intention of living a said life. Fate and destiny are really, really horrifying. In William Shakespeare's masterpiece, Julius Caesar, my personal favorite of his, the playwright transcribes perhaps the best line of dialogue ever put to page. Cassius remarks, the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. Shakespeare's line is remarkable. It has drawn many different interpretations, but to me, the quote indicates one thing. We are never in charge of where we end up. And that ties into this week's topic rather well. In 2012, Derek C. France released one of the best films of all time, The Place Beyond the Pines. Now, if you have not heard of it, do not worry, you are definitely not alone. The film, for some reason, has been ignored and forgotten over the past few years. And why that is, I really have no idea. St. Francis' film unfolds very similarly to a Shakespeare play, while structurally, St. Francis takes inspiration from Sophocles and Seneca with the film's three-act structure. The filmmaker crafts a story that tackles fate and destiny and keeps all its characters tightly knit. When the film's first act begins, we're introduced to Ryan Gosling's Luke. He is a motorcyclist who is in a horrid time in his life. He has no money, no girl, no life, no respect. The only thing he has is his bike. The character is reintroduced to Eva Mendez as Romina, a former lover who bears his child. Unknowingly. Who's that guy? He's yours. When Luke discovers his child, the character remarks, You're not gonna tell me? To which Romina states, Just a fling, right? The character then continues, I Haven't heard from you in over a year. You just took off. Never called me. Instantly, the audience knows the kind of character Luke is. He is a pretty average person. He doesn't care for anyone. But then in comes his son. Luke's character changes the second his son, Jason, is introduced. The character's development builds and an average fellow becomes an admirable anti-hero. Later in the film, Luke pulls Romina aside and reveals his plan. Don't talk down to me. It's a question, I'm not talking down to you. It's just a question. I'll find a way to do it. You want a house? I'll get you a house. You want to get the fuck out of here? We'll get out of here. I got that trailer. I'll get a truck. We'll hit the road. You pick a place you like, we'll stop. You don't want to be there, fuck you. We're out of there. What about my mom? She can come. What about Kofi? He can stay. Following Luke's commendable effort to win Romina back with his elaborate plan, she turns him down, stating, it Sounds like a nice dream. From here, the audience knows exactly where Luke is going. He now has his intentions. He's going to prove to Romina and to the world that he is not a failure. And like any great Shakespearean tragedy, Luke's plan is never achieved. The character has a falling out with Romina after he attacks her boyfriend in their home and is given a restraining order against Romina and Jason. Believing he can still win her and his son back, Luke begins robbing banks. Pray! Let me hear you fucking pray! Romina, of course, despises him for this. Luke's friend Robin reveals to the character, If you ride like lightning, you're gonna crash like thunder. Scene France wonderfully uses foreshadowing here to allude to Luke's demise. The character's tragic life comes to an end when he is shot and killed by Bradley Cooper's Avery Cross. As stated in King Lear, it is the stars, the stars above us, govern our conditions. The statement rings tragically true to the place beyond the pines. Despite all Luke's effort to outrun his fate, the character falls victim to his destiny. One of the movie's most unique components is how an hour into the movie, Luke is gone. Like, he's dead. Seed France beautifully shocks the audience by having him killed off. The revelation is all the more bizarre when you realize Ryan Gosling is no longer in the movie. It is a trick that Shakespeare used a lot. For instance, Julius Caesar dies in page 50 of Julius Caesar. Hamlet dies in Hamlet, and of course we all know how Romeo and Juliet ends. 
What makes the place beyond the pines so unique is that it is ballsy enough to go there, to do what Shakespeare did. In the second act, we have an entirely different protagonist, the previously mentioned Avery Cross. Now, while everyone is claiming that he is a hero, Cross feels guilty for killing a man who was only trying to help his son. The fact that he, he had a boy? Yeah. Do you think you're having a hard time looking at your son because you're thinking about this other little boy that won't have his father? This raises a really powerful question for Cross. Is there a difference between right and wrong? Can you do something wrong, but can that something also be right? Cross is a pretty unique character because unlike Luke, we do not really like him. I mean, he killed our lead character who has a son. Why should we like him? But seeing France, like Shakespeare's characterization of Brutus and Julius Caesar, creates a character we cannot help but feel for. Cross's partners actually steal the stolen money from Luke and give the local hero the lion's share. Cross, attempting to right his wrongs, brings this up with the commissioner, who states, What do you expect me to do with this? Say my problem, all right? This is your problem. To which Avery responds, This is our problem of the fucking police department, and I'm bringing it to your attention because that's what I should fucking do! Cross is put in a strange situation. His character is defined when he rats the other cops out. Like the first act's Luke, it was fate that Cross killed Luke. Fate that Cross ratted out his friends, and fate that Cross and Luke's sons would become best friends. Maybe I'm old school, but I think there is no greater technique than dramatic irony. When done right, it is simply remarkable. The consistent cringe and fear the audience has the entire time the term is in action is incredible. Scene France masters it in the final act. The director introduces the audience to a now grown up, Jason, played by Dane DeHaan, and Cross's son, AJ, played by Amore Cohen. The two know nothing of each other's past. Jason does not know that AJ's father killed his, nor does AJ know that his father killed Jason's. It is horrifying to watch because the audience knows that, eventually, it is going to come out. But when? Scene France wonderfully builds these two's relationship. They share witty dialogue, exchange drugs, it is nice until they are caught by the police. Cross realises who his son has been hanging out with and threatens his son to stay away from Jason. Cross states, Wipe that fucking smirk off your face. Did you hear me? I want you to leave that fucking kid alone, all right? Look at me. Look at me. You wanted to come live with me, right? You think this is easy for me? During this time? Huh? I'm trying to make this work. I'm doing it for you. You can have anything you want, but I don't want you to touch that kid. You leave him alone. Do you want to fucking stand me? Say yes. Yes. Cross attempts to bully his son into not hanging out with Jason, simply because he knows it will not end well. As proven by Luke's demise and Cross's betrayal, fate has a different plan. The two friends reacquaint at school, and their relationship collapses from there. After Romina's boyfriend Kofi tells Jason his father's name, the character finds his way to Robin. Scene France uses composer Mike Patton's symphonic track Snow Angels to reflect the parallels between Jason and Luke. The filmmaker furthers these illusions as he replicates certain shots and actions. Robin remarks to Jason, Why don't you put the glasses on? For sure, he would have said they were left there for you. No doubt. Put them on, if you want. Go on, put them on. Come on, I'll tell you. Yeah. 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 You're calling him back. <laughs> the idea that the son follows the father is something Scene France desired to communicate in this film. And he does this wonderfully with Jason and Luke. Scene France's use of dramatic irony comes to a swift end towards the finale of the movie. While at AJ's party, Jason sees an image of Cross. In his research, the character has discovered that Cross killed his father. The character snaps and confronts AJ about it. Follow 
Following this, AJ beats Jason to a pulp, and the character swears his vengeance. In the film's finale, Jason has kidnapped Cross and asks for his belongings. He has the character begging for his life. The character is on his knees. He repeats, Tell me my son's alright. To which Jason reveals, This isn't about your fucking son. It is in this moment that Cross apologises to Jason. I'm sorry, Jason. <laughs> I'm sorry. As he does this, Jason lowers his gun and escapes. While running away, Jason looks into Cross's wallet and finds a picture of Luke, Romina, and himself as an infant. Like the great work of Shakespeare, Scene France crafts a world that is horribly decayed. Tragedy follows a small group of people everywhere, and fate and destiny determine their roles in society. The filmmaker produces a movie that transcends genre and time, providing a tragic look at the impact of fathers. In the end of Scene France's beautiful story, Jason embraces the legend of his father, riding off into the sunset, as AJ follows his father's footsteps, joining him on stage. What the director is trying to say here is this. You cannot outrun your destiny, your fate. One of Shakespeare's inspirations, the great writer Sophocles, once stated, Fate has terrible power. You cannot escape it by wealth or war. No fort will keep it out. No ships outrun it. The Place Beyond the Pines beautifully paints a realistic and heartbreaking look at fate and destiny through the innovation of Shakespeare.